to do that kind of thing more often. Thank you. Well, last week everybody was so impressed with the nine-minute sermon, you've left me about the same this week. Nobody said it was a good sermon, but they all said it was short. I also said to you last week that I was going to do something that was extremely dangerous, that is go off and tape for the People Show a group of seven-year-olds and their reflections about Christmas. I'm going to redo it this week with the same group of seven-year-olds. There are a couple of reasons for it. One of them is they got very uptight the first time through with microphones and everything around them. But the second thing is I had done what I thought we ought to be doing and my producers went wild. They didn't talk about Christmas, they said. Not a child mentioned Santa Claus. Not a child mentioned Christmas trees. Not a child mentioned going out caroling. How can you say they talked about Christmas? And I kept saying to them, why is it that we as adults insist that our young people and our children reflect our ideas of what Christmas ought to be? I thought it would be interesting, and I'm glad that some of the kids are up here right now, to do a little reflection on what the kids did say, very quickly, putting it into a context. As we talked, I asked them a number of questions. One of them I said, what is Christmas? Christmas is Jesus' birthday. What does that mean? It means we celebrate the fact that Jesus was born. I said to them, what happens when you celebrate a birthday? Expecting that there would be an idea of a party, right? Expecting that they would talk about the giving of gifts and the sharing with friends and all the things which we so much include as part of our Christmas. One of the boys said, I get a year older. I said to him, You get a year older. What about Jesus? And they said, he gets a year older too. I said, but in our churches, we always show Jesus in a little manger as a baby with all the kinds of animals and all around it. Don't you think of Jesus as a baby? And without exception, every one of the kids says, no, we think of him as a man. Driving down the street with David the other day, he said, Dad, you know, I was walking along and I saw. And you know, we're right. People do think of Jesus as a baby in a manger. I saw over there in front of the house, they had Jesus' mother and Jesus' dad, and there was Jesus in some straw and all. But that's not what Jesus is, Dad. He was a man. Interesting. It's much easier to think about Jesus as a baby in a manger because that doesn't have anything except nice, warm feelings. It doesn't have to affect our lives in any way. And I couldn't get through to my production crew that that was one of the most significant statements about Christmas from the kids. That they considered what he was as he grew up more significant than the fact that he was a baby in a manger. Well, we talked about some other things. An important theme throughout it was love. I asked them if they like to receive and give presents. Oh, yes, they said. I said, what's the important thing about giving and receiving presents? They said, it's a way of showing that you love somebody. I said, if you had your choice between being loved or getting a present, what would you choose? And again, without exception, they said, we would choose to be loved. How do you know your parents love you? I said, well, partly they give us presents, but they do more. They sit down and talk with us like you are doing. Isn't that interesting? Part of how you express your love to your children is giving them the dignity of the time of day. And spending some time talking with them, not at them, not to them, not instructing them, not coercing them into a different form of behavior, but just spending some time talking with them and asking them and let them express what they think. That was a big theme in the kids' understanding. I said, what would be the impact of love in life? They said, it's interesting. If you love a crook, then he'll go out and love another crook, and maybe they won't be crooks anymore. (laughs) (laughs) They also said, one of our our little gals, our little black gal said, well, once in a while, the sign of love is when my mommy whoops me. I said, when your mommy whoops you, does that show she loves you or she's mad at you? He said, no, that shows she loves me, because usually when she whoops me, I need it. They tried to put stealing and robbery into a theme of loving. A big thing in the schools today is that you can't leave anything laying around. Am I right, kids? 
something on your desk or in your desk that you really like to come back and it's gone. And the kids talked about that. How there are people in their classrooms that just rip off anything and everything. And how it hurts them and how it gets them angry. But on the other hand, how they have to recognize they have to reach out to these people. And they talked about it. They talked about broken relationships between friends. One girl said, I have a best friend, but we had a bad fight. And I said, how did you get over it? She said, the next day we both apologized and said we were sorry. Doesn't got anything to do with Christmas at all, does it? Oh, it has everything to do with Christmas because what in the world is Christmas except, in a sense, reconciling man to man and God to man? And how many adults have the courage to go up to a friend they've had a fight with the next day and say, I'm sorry? And how many people really understand the inner working relationships of the impact of that? They asked me some questions. One of the boys said to me, if it's Christmas Eve and you had the power to change the world and the question of war came up, what would you do? I said, I think war is stupid. And the kids laughed and they said, so do we. And then we got talking about presents and war games and tanks and all of that. And they started off being rather pious and pompous. No, we don't like guns. We don't like tanks. We don't like toys like this. And finally, one little guy was looking like this. And his friend said, that's not true, is it, Sean? He said, no, I like to play with tanks. And I said to him, well, what's the difference? You just told me, Sean, that war is stupid, and yet you tell me you like to play with tanks and guns. He said, when I'm playing, I know it's play, and nobody's getting hurt. But any time anybody gets hurt, it's stupid, and war is not a game. What better phraseology for peace on earth among men of goodwill? where they recognize games. And what happens in society when we do go to war, we make it a game. And how much of the time do we try to say, well, it's just part of the game of life, and build on that kind of an image with kids without full understanding. I asked them, is Christmas for kids? They said, no. Christmas is for everybody. I said, parents too? And they said, yes. And it made me think a little bit. Christmas is for kids all too often because we force the kids down their throat all kinds of things. Chris was at Toys R Us, and one family buying for their two children had $498 worth of toys. Two women talked, and one said, I have three children. I now have 41 presents each, but I found something for one. I've got to go out and buy two more presents so everybody will have equal number of presents. Forty-two presents. And if you were to say to the kids, what did you get on Christmas? They'd say, I don't know. You get to a point where you're tearing open gifts like this as fast as you can, nice, 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 and there is no perspective, and there is no sharing. And then we say, oh, haven't we given the kids a wonderful Christmas? But if we listen to the kids, the nicest gift that we can give is a little bit of ourselves. And we ought to wrap up a three-by-five card that says, you and I are going to lunch, and the two of us are going to talk and have a gift of self together. That we ought to share and the questions about how and what we're doing in life. And maybe this Christmas season, as we talk and share as a family, we ought to listen to the kids to find out what Christmas is already and has always been about. Is Christmas for kids? I think yes, in the sense that they have a better understanding of it. We build all kinds of experiences in because we want to cover over our own unhappinesses, our own shames, our own failures. We try to sing joyously and happily because we don't want people to know where we're really at. But the kids have a refreshing ability to look at things as they are and accept them. Listen to your kids. You might find the true meaning of Christmas. Amen. Following the singing of the carol... And prior to the benediction, we're going to ask George Kuhn to make an announcement. But may we sing, It Came Upon the Midnight Clear.